Hello. Hi, it's Mark Sargent. Hello, this is Kiefer Carroll. Hi. Sorry, uh, I need to get into a quieter area. That, that's okay. So, um, please shut the door. So, would you be all right if we film this for reasons? Sure, we can film it. I mean, did you? I mean, you just just record it, or do you want to do video? Uh, we're gonna just record it. Oh, that's if fine. That's all right. No, that's fine. Absolutely. All right, so I'm starting the recording. It should be working now. Okay. So um, we have a couple questions for you. Yeah. One question is, why should this theory, why should the flat earth theory be taught in school? Why should it be taught in school? Um, yeah. Because the, the old saying that's, well, it's not even necessarily an old saying. Because I don't believe that science is always right. Science has got it's kind of turned into its own religion and become scientism, meaning whatever they put their stamp on, they say that's that's the absolute fact and that's what we should teach to our kids. And uh, I think they've they've taken it way too far. A quick example would be, uh, you want to tell me what the the boiling temperature of water is at sea level? Sure. That's fine. That's that's easily done, and, and just about anybody can repeat that experiment. You want to tell me what the core of the Earth looks like? That's a whole other thing, because you say it's 4,000 miles down, and you show us all these wonderful cross-sections of exactly what it looks like going down those 4,000 miles, even though the deepest hole ever drilled by science or corporations is 8 miles. It's not even, it's barely a fraction of 1%. Uh, and it, when it comes to the shape of the world, we kind of all fall into that same thing. Whereas we believe the shape of the world, we believe the, the world that is presented to us. And it's not like uh, the space agencies, for example, you know, the basically the face of science. Uh, the, the space agencies uh, didn't prove the globe. You know, it's not like we woke up in 1972 when the first uh, disc marble shot of the Earth was taken and said, oh, well, there it is. It's a globe. We supposedly knew for 500 years before that, at least. Well, uh, how, how did we know that? As a matter of fact, there's a great quote by um, George Orwell, who was not a flat earther, and he was talking about the, the responsibility of science. And he wrote this article in 1946. He said, you go to anybody on the street right now and you ask them how they know the world is a globe. They'll say, well, we just know. And he comes back and say, yeah, but how do you know? And then people get upset because they realize they don't. And that's basically the premise of why, why we should teach this in school. I think we should teach it along other things. I mean, if you're going to teach evolution, for example, as absolute fact, then I have to come back with, uh, like, the, the wonderful fish thing, with the coelacanth. Anyone can look this up. Absolute, you know, absolute fact. It w the thing has been dead, that fish has been dead for 70 million years. And then they caught one off the coast of South Africa in 1938. And then another one outside of Mozambique and Madagascar. And actually, they're all over uh, the outside of Africa. Difficult to catch, but not impossible. So not dead for 70 million years. And yet, you know, that's what they were teaching in school. This, this, is a, this fossil record shows this fish has been dead for 70 million years. And they were absolutely positively put it in a certificate you can frame wrong. Well, how did science get that so wrong? Because they just stopped looking. It's like, well, that's the truth right there. There's, there's the fossil record. And everything in that era must be dead because it's 70 million years ago. It's like, no, it's not. So the short version is, is that science can get things wrong too. So if you're going to teach some things in school, you better have it absolutely right to where the average person on the street can prove it for themselves. And they don't, they take it too far. There you go. That's my short answer. All right. We have a couple more questions if you don't mind. No, I don't mind. So one question we came up with as a group uh, was, did you always believe in this flatter theory and if not when did you start and what was the first piece of evidence to persuade you over oh yeah um and no nobody believes in flat earth when they start out everybody hates it everybody in the flat earth community that i spend time with and, and on the speaking circuit uh they all try to disprove it in fact the um 
the t-shirt literally reads, I became a flat earther because I tried to debunk it or disprove it. Uh, same thing with me. So I thought it was a terrible idea. Everybody hates flat earth. Why wouldn't they? It's a stupid, ridiculous, silly idea. And then I, I was just on my bucket list. I had looked at just about every conspiracy you could think of, have an opinion on just about every conspiracy you can think of. And looked at it in the summer of 2014. It was just it was just a random video by a German guy who was talking about flight routes. And he I don't think he was a hardcore flat earther, but he says there's something wrong with the with the flight routes in the southern hemisphere, and they only make sense if the uh, the Earth is actually flat, if it's a flat uh, disc thing. And I looked at it and I go, huh, that's pretty interesting. And I thought, well, I can disprove this. I mean, I'm a pretty clever guy. I should be able to shut this thing down. So I spent a few days looking at it and then a few more days and then a few more days and then, you know, forward nine months later to the beginning of 2015, uh, that's when I really, you know, had a problem. I was like, okay, I can't, I can't prove the globe in a court of law anymore. So that's when I made a series of videos. Um, was there any one thing that kind of tipped the scales for me? Yeah, it was the, um, the Antarctic Treaty of uh, 1959 the only treaty that's still in force to this day anywhere uh which says that no corporation from any country no matter how much money you have no matter how much you lobby can go down to antarctica and do anything you can't set up shop there even though the place is just f apparently full of resources and that goes against everything that we are as a civilization i mean, you know everybody knows the world runs on greed and power and money i don't care if it's capitalism or communism money rules the day you know it is it is a god in in some people's eyes and that is completely dismissed in this case this whatever's happening out there part of you know the flat earth model is is being shut out it's like this is bigger than money it's like what what conspiracies are bigger than money i can't think of any others so that was that was the really thing that was the thing that did it for me and uh yeah that was four years ago and here I am today, you know, getting ready to head off to another conference in um, London. <laughs> All right. Um, so I find this one interesting. How do you explain the solar eclipse? Oh, yeah. It's, it's not an easy one for most people, which is even in the flat earth community, because I got a chance to, to view the eclipse. The I was in the blackout zone in um, Salem, Oregon in 2017 for the documentary. <laughs> And that is uh, the sky and everything in it. And you can apply this to just about any question when it comes to the sky, whether it be the stars or the planets or the sun or the moon. Uh, it's just part of a giant projection system, no different than a planetarium where, you know, when you go to a planetarium, and I know I'm, I'm dating myself when I say that, uh, when you look up in the sky, the, the stars are just points of light. And same thing with the planets and, you know, the moon is just a bigger light. Um, when it comes to the sun, which we can't, well, I mean, suppose if we had the money, we, you know, if you had the money to build a new planetarium, you could do it because we can generate some pretty bright stuff, lumens now with projection screens, but you're just dimming the sun. Uh, it's no different than what you do in a planetarium with the moon. So if you're in a, in a building when you're projecting the moon, you do, you know, a quarter moon and a crescent moon and a full moon. But when it comes to the sun, we always think of the sun as the sun. It's never a half sun or a quarter sun or anything like that until you see an eclipse uh, and that's how you do it you just shade the, the sun no no different than you would the moon except that it's easier to get away with with the sun because it's so bright that most people can't tell that you, it's basically not trying to peek behind a three-dimensional object uh, if anything it's it's two-dimensional all right um, so I've been I've been told that some people view you as the leader of this push, I would say, to make more people believe in the flat earth theory. Would you say that you are? A leader? Uh, I'm pri what, I, what I like to call myself is the freshman recruiter uh, because there's so many great channels out there and there's so many people making uh, fantastic content for the flat earth. But... I was the guy that came up with the um, the 101 book, you know, the Dummies Guide for Flat Earth. So chances are, if you're getting into Flat Earth for the first time, you're going to run through my stuff. So as far as, you know, do we have a council? You know, we, you know, do we have board meetings? No. 
do people people ask me for advice sometimes um sure sure uh but at the same time i don't dictate policy in in any way i'll, I'll help organize meetups and you know i'll speak at conferences and uh but you know if i died in a in a bus crash tomorrow uh, you know flat earth would continue on with without even i think really even a hiccup so you the flat earth theory does state there's a dome yeah. surrounding the top of the earth correct yeah. Yeah, mo most people, I think it's it's about 70-30, meaning uh, in the Flat Earth community, because it's de we're definitely not in agreement on all the finer points of Flat Earth, but more than half of the people, you know, I'd say pushing 70%, believe in a, in a dome, yeah. So if there is a dome, would that mean the moon landing was possibly faked? Oh, God, it's worse than that. I, the, the moon landing, the entire NASA program, is absolutely faked and i'm you know i'm saying this as an american uh you know proud proud to be an american wave the flag go team uh but yes the the entire mercury gemini apollo the space shuttle missions soyuz uh, even the space station um but yeah the, the apollo mission is absolutely fake from minute one because they had to uh in fact it was it was lots of people had been questioning the um the moon landing for years way with that way before flat earth including me, but I couldn't come up with a good enough reason. I thought that, uh, you know, doing it for national pride and, you know, to make yourself stand out as a nation, I suppose that's a good reason, but it wasn't a great one. And so when I looked at Flat Earth, it's like, oh, okay, now I get it. You have to fake the moon mission. Because if you don't, eventually the private sector gets involved and the military contractors that have that technology. Remember, NASA is just a collection of parts. Uh, you, know, you don't want them getting anywhere near it. So you militarize space, you fake the missions. And the photographs, the photographs have aged badly. The video has aged even worse. So, yeah, and two, like two or three quick points on why the moon missions, if you want to look at it, uh, you know, just look at any photo from, from the moon mission. I'll give you three quick examples. Uh, the shadows intersect, which you would never, ever find. One light source, the shadows always, always, always go in one direction and the shadows go in multiple directions and they and they shouldn't uh two no blast crater you know no splay pattern below this ten thousand foot pounds of thrust engine below this this thing that landed on the ground i mean there should have been a splay pattern everywhere you know it landed in ash and it's like nothing was disturbed at all you know the footprints were pristine but there's no splay pattern and of course um one of my other favorites would be the uh, the antenna dish, you know, the satellite dish that they hooked up there with the, the battery technology and, you know, the VHF transmitter technology they had of 1969 on a perfect day, maybe had a range of uh, 50 miles, maybe. I mean, you can look this up. This is not secret technology. And yet this and that's, you know, beaming maybe Morse code. And yet this thing was shooting off 10 frames of video per second in color with perfect pinpoint accuracy at a target you couldn't even begin to see uh you know with with even a, a fraction of a degree that's off you would lose the signal entirely and this thing was flawless without any snow and and in turn did two-way communication quarter million miles no no not a chance but most people don't know electrical engineering most people don't know math most people don't know physics and so we kind of glossed over that and the american people bought it you know so we we have a, a let me end this part on this which is uh, the American people in the world at general have, um, again, we believe the world is, that is presented to us. And if it is on the news, no matter how it got to the news, if it is on a news channel, we absolutely believe it as gospel. And uh, it's like, yeah, you know, I'm a big believer of trust everyone, but count your change. All right. Now, um, I, I have a question. Yeah. My teacher, my science teacher, she yeah. wants a flat earth shirt to hang on her wall <laughs> yes would you be able to provide one of those uh sure sure i can i can get a a, a flat earth shirt to this science teacher just email me the um the address and i'll have um actually do you have a pencil and paper right now uh sure because i have the address right here all right who am i sending it uh, Miss Livesay, L I V E S A Y. Miss L I V E S A Y, Livesay, got it. Yes. The address you're going to be sending it to is 
304. Yeah. Joseph's Lane. Joseph's Lane. Okay. Pitts, Pittsburgh, PA. One five, one five two three seven. So just fifteen twenty three seven. Got it. And is she a? Um, All right. Is she a, a high school teacher or college instructor? She's a high school teacher. I'm actually a freshman. <laughs> wow. <but laughs> your your voice actually sounds uh, deeper than a freshman. Just so you know. All right. Well, actually, my class wants to say hi. So I'm going to take you out there. You're on speaker. Okay. But you got to give me a second to quiet them down. Okay. Quiet down. Hey, guys. Uh, remember? No, they, so, sound, they sound like freshmen. I'm, okay. So, um. Hey, Mr. Sargent. This uh, is uh, Brittany Livesey, and I'm the teacher at Avonworth High School. And I just wanted to thank you for taking the time to speak with my students. It's really appreciated. Oh, yeah. Yeah, happy to do it. Uh, thanks for giving me the opportunity. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, I'll let uh, Keeper talk to the class and you. Okay. So, like I said, let's be respectful. Any questions you guys would like to ask Mr. Sargent? Hey, how did he come up with the idea? Don't be shy. Can they hear how me? How did you come uh, can you hear him? Yeah. He, Payton asked, how did you come up with the idea the Earth is flat? Uh, I came up with it because I did a whole bunch of research in 2014, tried to disprove it. I didn't, I didn't like the flat Earth at all, and all I did was I tried to prove the globe in a court of law, and not literally, of course, and uh, did a whole bunch of research for nine months, and everything pointed towards the same thing, which is the world is not what you think it is. Uh, I uh, I really like that answer, Mr. Sargent, as I am the purpose of this project is to gather as much evidence as possible. Oh, cool. And that is something that we're having a hard time with. And so this the answer that you just said is spot on. And I appreciate that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No worries. I mean, yeah. uh, what I try to tell people is like, look, don't don't take my word for, for anything. You know, do your own research and ask your own questions. Um, what it, when it came to this again, it's not that could I, could I prove to you right now, uh, that it's a flat earth? No, I couldn't, but I could create so much reasonable doubt in the globe that you have nowhere else to turn, but some sort of flat earth model. And just about everybody in the flat earth community would agree with that statement. I mean, we, we can't even agree amongst ourselves. And I don't know if you guys watch the documentary, but I mean, we, we bicker amongst ourselves a lot. But at the end of the day, we still all say, oh, yeah, it's not a globe. We're still working on it, the exact shape and, and perspective of what it is, but it's definitely not a globe. All right, so JJ has a question. Sure. Okay. My question is, if the world has a dome, wouldn't there be a great amount of carbon dioxide? Yes. Yes, that would. That, that's an excellent question, by the way, uh, because people ask me, especially over the last couple of years, they've said, um, you know, is it or do you believe in like climate change? And I say I do, but I do from a flat earth perspective, meaning doesn't it make more sense that, uh, you know, the greenhouse gas effect is actually real because it's an actual greenhouse because it's enclosed? Yeah, I absolutely believe that. Meaning if it's an enclosed system, what's happening to our climate right now would correspond with that. Meaning, you know, even if it's an automated system and, you know, there are filtration systems that are trying to do what it can, uh, I do believe that the human population is influencing the climate. I mean, I'm, I'm kind of sad that they don't call it global warming anymore because the temperatures have gone up. I mean, I can, I can say that for a fact. I'm up here in Seattle and last year I was getting a tan on Halloween. 20 years ago, I never would have been able to say that. Um, any, any more questions? I have another question. Uh, my friend JJ has another one. JJ. Um, so if a plane flew off the edge of the earth, uh, would it just fall off? Ah, no, because it's enclosed. So we're not talking about, and part of it is just the, the space reinforcement, which you're, which you're used to. And that is you got to get rid of space. You got you to gotta throw, that, throw that away. I mean, think of this. You're in a snow globe. You're in a building with walls and a floor and a ceiling. And we don't even know what's outside of it. You know, I could take a guess and say it's some sort of unlimited dimension. 
but there's nothing to fall off of because, I mean, you could be sitting on a snow globe on some scientist's table for all we know. Uh, it's, you, you could take a plane and you could fly to Antarctica. You're not going to fall off. Eventually, eventually, you may run into some sort of barrier but no, nobody's falling off at anything. Sort of like, um, and people, add, uh, the, the follow-up to that question is, why don't you have, why doesn't the water fall off, right? You know, why, you know, why don't ships just sail off the edge? And that is, okay, can a ship sail off the edge of a lake? No, because there's shoreline all the way around. And that's no different with the Flat Earth model. It's just much, much bigger. All right, um... Well, I think we've got to go, so thank you. <laughs> okay. Oh, wait, no, someone, someone has a question. Oh, okay, okay. okay. Allegan, you can go. One more, one more. All right, you can go. So, on the documentary, yeah. you, when, the, when they showed the flag with the three stripes, do you think if it was a cold day that day, do you think the uh, stripes wouldn't have disappeared? Um, I don't think that was on the documentary. I think that was on the National Geographic segment. But no, yeah, no. Yeah, it, is, is, and, and that's a good point. And that is National Geographic. Ugh, they hate us so much. The, um, the coldness, <laughs> yeah, a cold day does help. One of my favorite tests ever is on, a, on an almost frozen lake. You can look this up on YouTube. It's called 7.53 frozen. Or you can type in flat earth 7.53. Just remember that. Uh, where two people, you know, husband and wife are literally one, the, the wife puts the flashlight 7.53 miles away on the ice and he has his camera on a little tripod, which is on the ice, which is maybe one foot up and he caught, he cut, catches the whole thing. So yes, cold weather does definitely help, but it's not perfect because as you know, or maybe you don't know what you're breathing in now is kind of like a thin version of water. It's only tw less than 20% oxygen. The rest is nitrogen. So you're kind of, we're kind of in this thin, almost transparent soup. And it's changing constantly because of temperature and humidity and light sources. So, yes. But the short answer is yes to your question. Thank you. All right. So, uh, did you ask him if we could send him a thank you card? Oh, I forgot. No, no, I, you, can, you can send me whatever you want. Um, my, my physical address is literally in the description box of every single video I make. So you don't you don't have to write anything oh, down. Wow. My my phone number, my name, my physical, all all my stuff is in the the YouTube video stuff. Wow. Uh, can you just say your address right now? All right. All right. You ready? You ready? Here we go. Uh, the address is Mark Sargent, twenty four ten James Place. Twenty four ten. So two thousand four hundred and ten. James. Yes. James Place. Number 502, and that's in Langley, L-A-N-G-L-E-Y, Washington. And the zip code is... Thank you. And zip code is 98260. 98260? Yep. Oh, what is your shirt size? Sorry. <laughs> it's XL. All right. Thank you. Hey, no, thank so, you guys. And uh, again, uh, I appreciate I appreciate you taking your time out of your your day to do this. Um, I'm going to have to go go so I can work on my project. Thank you again. All right, you have a good one. Thanks, guys. You too. All right. Bye bye.